and welcome again to Cottage Talk. I am Russ Goldman. This is our preview of Fulham's match on Sunday against Arsenal at Craven Cottage. This should be interesting. I'm looking forward to the match on Sunday. A huge test for Fulham as they're going to be facing the team, which I believe is going to end this season as champions of the Premier League. They are an excellent side with an excellent manager. Can Fulham pull off the upset? I'm going to make my argument in this 15 to 20 minute episode why I believe they can. So just want to just start there. As always, please do subscribe on YouTube and Apple Podcasts. It does help other Fulham supporters find us. Like I mentioned, this won't be a long show. I'm just going to be sharing my thoughts on Arsenal, on Fulham, Marcos Presser. There's some good stuff here that I'm going to be talking about in a very quick show. To preview the match at the end, I'll share what I think Marco should go with a starting 11. I'll share my prediction as well. If you're watching live, feel free to share your prediction for this match on Sunday for Fulham. So let's not waste any time. First, I'm just going to share my thoughts overall on Arsenal. I've watched them a great deal. This is a very good side. It's really come all together for them. What's fascinating about watching them is that you might look at them and say, well, they're not the most talented side in the Premier League. They're probably not. But I'm going to make the argument that they're the best team in the Premier League. The way they play, the way they fight for each other, the way they fight for the club, the players. When you can come back the way that they have come back, that showed me that Arsenal are on their way to winning the title. I could be proven wrong by the end of the season, but I truly believe that they have shown that way to win. I've said that about Fulham, finding ways to win. Arsenal are doing that right now. There might be matches where you don't think they're going to find a way, and they do. That's a mark of a champion. That's a mark of a team that knows how to win. They know how to win. Fulham's another team that knows how to win. They deserve to be where they are right now, sitting seventh. I'll just say that. And I think they're going to go into this match with a lot of respect for Arsenal, like I. But I think they know that they can beat Arsenal. And I think Fulham can beat Arsenal. But we will see if my prediction at the end of the show reigns true. Because everything has to go right for them. They have to play perfect. Can they play perfect or near perfect against Arsenal? A lot has to go their way. And I will... Lay out what has to happen, and uh, we'll see if that ends up happening throughout the match to give Fulham the victory. I'll be making that argument coming up. But before I go on any further, I do want to mention a little bit from Marco's Presser, and that's going to set up the show. So first of all, in Marco's Presser, he was asked about Xiao Paulinha, and I'll just mention this, that paraphrasing, but the interest that Paulinha is getting in, Marco basically said that people are going to talk about the player. He can't stop them from talking about the player. But you know what? He made it clear that, based on what I watched, that pulling his happy at home will see where that leads. To go to the next step, Marco also talked about himself. So let's talk about this. And here's a quote from Marco where he was asked about the speculation linking him to the Tottenham Hotspur position, that if they move on from Conte, they could have some interest in him with some other managers. And basically, he let the press know that he has this season and next season on his contract and that he's happy at Fulham, and he's not going to address it. And I think that's great. And I'm just going to share my thoughts on this. First of all, what manager in their right mind would admit to the press, you know what, I'm actually interested in that job. You know what, I think I might look at that job. You know what, it's flattering. They're not going to say any of that. But I truly believe what Marco said is true, that he's happy at Fulham, and I hope it turns out to be a long-term marriage between Fulham and Marco Silva. Obviously, we still have this season and next season. I have a feeling that they will negotiate, and we'll see – if Fulham and Marco Silva can get a long-term deal done, that's what I hope. But to me, this is the quote that says it all. Quote, I'm really happy here, unquote. So for those who think that Marco could be looking elsewhere, obviously 
that could happen in the future. But right now, I think the manager told you he's happy at full. So that, to me, is something to hold your hat on. Also in the presser, he was asked a little bit about Arsenal. Now, talk a little bit when we really break down this match, a little bit of the confidence that I'm getting from this. Now, again, it is a presser, but this is what Marco shared from the presser. I got this from the Foam Twitter account. On the last time we faced Arsenal, this is a quote from Marco, quote, we did a very good game. They scored from a corner in the last minutes of the game. We have to believe in ourselves and the way we're going to play, unquote. And that's basically it. If you go back and look at that match, Fulham were in it to the end, and it took a goal at the very end off of a corner to give Arsenal the victory. And the way they celebrated, you know, they knew that they were in a battle. The fans knew they were in a battle. They're going to be in another one against Fulham at Craven Cutch. Yes, I know Xiao Poling is not playing. But Arsenal might have their own concerns of players potentially not being able to play or not being 100%. I'll share that in just a few minutes. But going back to this, Fulham, it sounds like to me, from Marco, respect Arsenal a great deal. But they also know, this is my opinion, that they can play with Arsenal and that they can give them a game. This time, it's at Craven Cottage. It's on their turf their terms, and to me, I think they have a very good chance to get all three points. I do, even without Jao Ponya. That's just my opinion. We'll see if I'm right, see if I'm wrong. One of the reasons why I feel this way comes from an article from the Daily Mail, and I'm going to focus on this because it'll it'll go into why I feel Fulham have a chance. Like I said, everything has to go right for Fulham to beat Arsenal. I wouldn't say everything has to go right to get a draw. To beat this team, everything has to go right. And their struggles lately defending set pieces is a way for Fulham to win the match. And this is from the article from the Daily Mail. I'm going to read an excerpt from it, and here it is. Penalties aside, they've been undone from set pieces in five of their past ten matches. Before Christmas, it happened just twice. That speaks volumes. They're struggling defending set pieces. What is a massive strength for Fulham? Set pieces. So I think this is a way for Fulham to win the match. If they're struggling, Fulham have to create as many set piece opportunities as possible to win this match. They just have to. This has to be part of how they play in this match. They have to create. If they're not able to create set pieces, they will struggle against a team that I think is going to win the league because they are an excellent side. No qualms about that. Arsenal are a very good side who I think are going to win the league. Okay, so another reason why there could be an opportunity here for Fulham. Now, Fulham are dealing with Zhao Polina being out, and that is a huge, massive loss. However, Arsenal are dealing with just playing a match Thursday night in the Europa League. That's number one. But they're also dealing with some injuries and some illnesses that leave four players, four key players in doubt. Now, some of them could potentially play. Who knows? Maybe all of them play, or maybe they all don't. Who knows? We'll only find out. But the fact that these four players are doubts for the match is uh, interesting and something to consider when we get to the match. Well, we'll find out when the starting 11 comes out an hour before the match. But these are factors here, just like Jal Polina being out. So let's start with the players that are dealing with an illness. Now, they might be ready for the match, but a huge player would be Martin Odegaard because I think he is such a key player for Arsenal. If he can't play or not at 100%, there's an opportunity for Fulham here. Karen Tierney, also a player that is dealing with with an illness. On the issue with injuries, and again, could they be back in time? We we shall see. Makechia and Trossard both are doubts for this match. So if neither one or both of them can't do, that's an advantage for Fulham. I would prefer that Fulham face a team that is completely healthy. That's how I roll. 
But if they're not healthy, I'm not going to say that that doesn't help them. Or if they are have a weakened side because of injuries and illnesses. But they have so many players, Arsenal, so many quality players that it wouldn't be this excuse if Fulham beat them with some of these players being out because they have enough to beat Fulham even with all these players out. They do. So it'll come down to who is better on that day. But let's be honest here. If some of these players can't play, that's going to benefit Fulham. It, it just is. Okay. So key players for Arsenal, like I just mentioned, for me, it starts with Odegaard. If he's going to play, that is a huge advantage for Arsenal because I think he is what makes them tick. Then you look up front, you have Martinelli, you have Saka, you have some very dangerous players up there. But for me, it starts with Odegaard. He is the key for Arsenal. He makes them go. If he plays and is ready to go, they're going to be difficult to beat. So that's why he's a key player. When I look at Fulham, this is where it gets interesting because I'm going to put the key player, and this is not what you're looking for when you're talking about key players, but I'm going to put it on Burn Leno because I think Burn Leno has to have a massive match for Fulham to have a shot here playing against his former side. He has to be, he has to have a nine out of 10 type of match. He has to basically, as we would say over here, would say the NHL and goalkeepers, he needs to sit on his head and basically just stop everything that comes his way. That's why Bern Leno is going to be massive in this match. I'll also say a key player is going to be Sasa Lukic because he's going to have to step up his game and really help him out in central midfield. That battle is going to be huge in this match along with Harrison Reed. But Sasa Lukic, for me, is going to be a huge player in this match. Okay, coming up next, I'm going to share how Fulham can win this match. My starting 11 for Marco, what I would do, and my prediction. And if you have predictions, I'll be sharing them as well. Okay, so how does Fulham pull off this massive upset? And believe me, this would be an upset. It starts where I already mentioned. They have to score on set pieces. Andres Pereira has to be lethal on set pieces. They have to have a lot of different routines, and they need to create these opportunities. And they need to score one, dare I say, maybe multiple goals on set pieces. Right now, Arsenal are struggling defending set pieces. They need to take advantage of that. And they need to also withhold a storm at the beginning of the match. They were not able to do that against Brentford. Fulham should go into this match confident and they should treat it like they did when they faced Liverpool at the beginning of the season. They're going to have their strategy, but they cannot let Arsenal dictate everything. They can dictate it, I truly believe, at Craven Cottage. So for me, it's being able to withhold that early storm, get over it, and they're going to have to score on set pieces. That's how Fulham's going to win this match, if they're going to win this match. Okay, so now we go to a starting 11. This is going to be interesting. I did listen to the Fulmish podcast, and they gave their starting 11. They actually made the argument to potentially they were going back and forth on should they start Menor Solomon or, or start William. So it's an interesting way to look at it because Menor Solomon has been very valuable coming off the bench the way that he plays. So I've been giving this a lot of thought. So let's start from the back. I'm going to go with Burn Leno. Kenny Tete as your right back. Your left back is Anthony Robinson. We got Diop and Reem. In the middle, you're going to have Harrison Reed, Sasa Lukic, and Andres Pereira. On the left, I'm going to go with Menor Solomon. On the right, I'm going Bobby Decker, Dover Reed, and Mitro up front. Yes, I am going to go with Menor Solomon, and I'm going to have William come off the bench. That's what I'm going to do. I, I think William could really be valuable off the bench. I think he's been struggling a little bit lately. So maybe it's time to have him come off the bench and be effective that way because I think he could give you a truly solid 30 minutes. I think he can give you more than that. But maybe we switch the roles, and instead of Menor Solomon coming on for 30 minutes, we have William coming on for 30 minutes. Maybe that's the game changer Fulham need. 
just switch their roles. But I think Bobby Decadova Reed starting is the way to go against a team like Arsenal. Start Bobby Decadova Reed on the right and Menor Solomon on the left. And I said it wrong. It's actually Menor Solomon. Okay. Before I share my prediction, I'm going to share some comments from the Fulham supporters. Let's see. And also from a non Fulham supporter, Chris Goodwin. Well, Russ, a massive test this Sunday. You're right, Chris. As we look forward to Fulham beating Liverpool in a few weeks' time. Just kidding. Or maybe I'm not. I think Fulham can beat Liverpool at Anfield. I'm just going to share that. Okay. See what other comments we have. I'm going to share this from Abraham. He says, it's an important Fulham fans don't panic over Brentford game. Players have credit and bank after World Cup league table. We're fifth. Chill pill needed from Fulham family. Okay, very good. This is from my friend Steve Reynolds, who is going to have a birthday tomorrow. Happy birthday in advance, Steve. Don't change the way we play. Yusuf agrees that let's go for it. Rock and FFC, we expect to lose, so go for it. Okay, let's see. This is from Val Kalasi. Why would he leave? He likes the club, gets on with the players and the board, and I'm sure it's a very happy ship for Marco. I agree with you. I don't see any reason why he would leave. It's a good place for him to be. Let's see. This is from Chris Goodwin. He's going with Arsenal 3-1. to one. I understand. Chris, I certainly understand why you would do that. Let's see. This is from Val Colossi. He says, not sure. I think one will be up for it. I don't know. It's very interesting that you say that. This is from my friend Wayne Walden. We need all the Fulham fans to be behind the team for 90 minutes on Sunday against Arsenal. Come on, Fulham. We can do this. And Fulham win 2-1. to one. Okay, Wayne, it's very interesting that that's your prediction because now it's time for my prediction. Wayne, I'm with you. I'm going for a two-to-one Fulham victory. I'm going to say they're going to score on two set pieces. I'm going to say, and I'm going to say Mitro scores on both of them. Two-to-one to Fulham. That's my prediction. How strange would that be if Fulham score on two set pieces and both goals were from Mitro? But stranger things have happened. Okay. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of Cottage Talk. As always, please do subscribe on YouTube and Apple Podcasts. It does help other phone supporters find us. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. My name is Russ Goldman. Thank you, as always, for watching and listening to Cottage Talk, now part of the TalkSport Fan Network.